All right. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming to this morning's keynote. My name is Chris Lux, and I am the moderator today. Uh, with me today is our keynote, uh, Pam Hanks, uh, and she's here from New River Community College to talk about recognizing and supporting students with autism uh, spectrum disorder across teaching modalities. Uh, before we get started, as, as we uh, talked about today in the morning show, one of the things we've been doing before the keynotes during this conference is to give a land acknowledgement uh, and to raise awareness of this practice. Uh, and so for today, I'm going to talk about one from the uh, we're, we're currently working on here in Colorado, the Colorado Community College System as uh, land acknowledgement. And so for that, I'll go ahead and start with that. Uh, the Colorado Community College System acknowledges with respect that the land we are presenting from today is the traditional ancestral homeland of the Apache, Arapa, Arapaho, Cheyenne, Pueblo, Shoshone, Kiowa, and the Ute nations, tribes, and peoples. This land was also the site of trade, gathering, and healing for numerous other native tribes. We recognize the indigenous peoples as original stewards of this land and all relatives within it. As these words of acknowledgement are spoken and heard, the ties, the, the ties nations have to their traditional homelands are renewed and reaffirmed. And with that, we'll go ahead and turn it over to Pam uh, to talk about today's topic. Well, good morning to you all. It's almost noon, it's getting close to noon here um, on the East Coast. I would like to start by sharing with each of you that I have a son who was diagnosed with autism at a very early age. And my husband and I have spent much of our time and our life and our resources I'm trying to help him achieve a happy and fulfilling life. Additionally, my dissertation was on community college faculty members recognition of students with ASD. Um, and with that being said, I'm very passionate about this subject and I may come across as sanctimonious at times and that's not my intention. Um, my hope is that uh, I will hope you learn something um, about ASD students and that we can help them. Finally, um, if you would put your questions in the chat, I know our moderator, Chris, will be happy to inform me of your questions. Um, Chris, if you would change slides, please. Um, so if when, when I click my screen, Chris, you disappear. So this is gonna be, oh. <laughs> this is gonna be so much fun. Um, so Chris is running the slides for me and I'm trying to, to use my notes here on the side. So um, autism spectrum disorder, trying to define that, um, this is um, a condition that affects the brain's development primarily in the areas of social communication, social interaction and behavior. Um, and so before we go to the next point, actually there's five different um, diagnoses um, all in one spectrum. So if you'll go ahead and click that, Chris, autism spectrum disorder um, actually consists of five, but I'm gonna list three, autism, Asperger's syndrome, and pervasive developmental delay. Um, next please, Chris. Comorbid behaviors um, are also conditions that um, may include um, attention deficit hyperactive disorder, anxiety, depression, bipolar disorder, and many others. So these folks oftentimes present um, comorbid conditions in addition to ASD. Um, so not only are they with ASD, they also have other conditions and, and many times several of these. Um, so next, Chris, please. So the range of symptoms that you see may present from mild to severe. Um, next slide, please. And because of that, Dr. Stephen Shore said, if you've met one person with autism, you've met one person with autism. And Dr. Stephen Shore is a professor um, of special education and he's written several books for autistic students. So Chris, next slide, please. Should be one with images. 
Well, maybe I missed one. Okay, so I did miss one. So there are one in 54 individuals currently diagnosed with ASD, um, and that's the Center for Disease Control and um, Prevention. There are four times as many males that are diagnosed as females, and, and that's a big, I think, study right now is why is that the case? And that's mostly because females present characteristics later and are better at social encounters um, many times um, at a younger age. Um, next slide, Chris, our next um, point. So individuals with ASD need post-secondary education and job training, but they're historically underserved by higher education, including community colleges. Um, these folks, ASD folks, place much value in their ability to work um, and hold a job. Next point. 80% of autistic college students will attend a community college sometime during their lifetime. Now that's 80% of college students, not all ASD individuals, but those that attend college. Um, next point, please. 70% of public community colleges in 2011 consisted of ASD student enrollments. I would suge suggest that's 100% now. Next point, please. These students come to college with impairments that are not visible or easily noticed, causing many instructors to be unaware of the type of support that's needed. Um, so just as someone has a broken leg, needs crutches to walk, these ASD students need supports in the classroom. So next slide, please, Chris. Well, actually, it's, it's a, a great point because that's one of the things that I talked about in the in the morning show this morning is that as we're talking specifically about autism spectrum disorder students, one of the things to think about is this is this is really a lot of the students who um, would also fall under the classification that that really we would have students that this would fall, this would be students that would fall under like traumatic brain injury as well as ADHD. Mm -hmm. um, and so really the, what we're thinking about here as everyone, as everyone's listening to these statistics and thinking about um, the, the talking points here is really looking at and thinking about, in, you know, sort of this, this neurotypical bias that might exist within our courses as we, as we continue on with the talk. And that's really, this is some really powerful statistics here. When we think about the number of folks that are just falling within this one category category. We're not just one class of students as opposed mm -hmm. to um, these other larger groups um, that we are all serving uh, at various levels. Thanks, Chris. So the next slide, if um, you go click the first yep, image. Um, this is my um, son as a baby. Um, next picture is a five-year-old. He's with his brother. And then the next picture that you see is he's an 18 year old, good looking young man with an invisible disorder. So if you just see him, you don't really think anything about autism. All right, next slide, Chris. So section 504 of the um, Vocational Rehabilitation Act of 1973 and the Americans with Disability Act they're federal laws intended to ensure that institutions of higher ed receiving federal monies are not discriminating against these individuals. Um, and then the next point also with this, um, the laws also ensure that these individuals with disabilities seeking participation in or benefit from a program or activity are also not guaranteed to be discriminated against based on their disability. So I think those are two very important points to be made. Um, and, and so the other thing that we need to talk about here is, um, well, the accommodations could be something like say note taking, recordings, um, different testing formats, such as a quiet testing room where a student can talk to themselves, which if we're, we're talking, um, in a virtual world, that's 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 okay. I mean, they're usually at home. So just remember that making an accommodation does not mean that you're changing your academic rigor of your course. Mm -hmm. You're just providing those necessary supports, the crutches that they use need to walk. So um, why do these students maybe not identify? Why do you maybe not know that these folks are um, 
needing support. Well, some of them won't tell you because they've been bullied and they attribute that to the diagnosis. Um, I had one student tell me, no, ma'am, I cannot identify because my parents see mental health as something that's bad and, and we're not going to be put in that um, category. Um, others think that their IEPs, their paperwork, follow them from um, high school, K-12, they, because it always has, so they think it's going to follow them to college. So they're very surprised in many cases that it doesn't. They just didn't know. Or others, um, it costs to have some testing to actually have some of that follow around um, with them. So um, to get that to college in some case, it's IEP, Individualized Education Plan. Um, okay, Chris, so let's move. Um, to the next slide then. You have a quick question. Uh, the, anim sure. uh, the anonymity of an online class probably uh, provide that uh, online classes provide probably causes more of a barrier or less of a barrier, do you think, for uh, students, for ASD students, the, the anonymity uh, factor? See, to me, I think it's it's 50-50 really. You know, um, I'm going to give you some characteristics here in a minute that maybe that'll help you um, to maybe identify some of these folks, but you're right. It, it and, and even in the classroom, you know, I, I, I would think that's kind of 50-50, I would. And I would say another, another piece to this is also looking at the, um, you know, when we're thinking about the, the Section 504 and looking at the laws and regulations, this is also tying into a lot of our diversity, equity, and inclusion planning that a lot of schools are embarking on right now as well. It's thinking about how do we create an environment that's welcoming and supportive of all of our students. As well. Right. And so. Right. Okay, so um, next slide. Um, students with ASD. So let's look at some characteristics. Um, so the first one, Chris, um, they may be very interested in people, but not know how to talk or relate with them. Um, so they may be shy, uninterested, some kind of overdue, um, being accepted or noticed, but I'll bet you one thing. Autistic people try harder to understand others than others many times try to understand or accept these folks. So just kind of try to remember that. Um, so at the second point, they may have difficulty adapting um, when there's a change in routine. So just um, a suggestion there for that. If you um, in class, and, and this will help all of your folks, maybe have a daily syllabus. Hey, today we're going to cover X, Y, Z. Here are our measurable object objectives. Here's some activities. Um, and that'll just bring the stress level down for maybe all of your folks. And, and I would suggest that it's helpful to pattern your semester for this, kind of have that nice pattern that you follow that, and then also keep your learning management system organized. Um, maybe even at the college level where you have the same homepage and you have the same items opened, say in Canvas, maybe just um, announcements and modules and um, grades. Um, so, and, and another thing, you could even go further. On Tuesdays every week, we'll have discussion boards um, due. On Fridays every week, we'll have quizzes due. On Mondays, your written assignments will be due. So those are just some, some suggestions that maybe would be helpful. All right, next point, Chris. Um, avoid eye contact or offer extended eye contact. Um, you might notice that. Um, next, please. Repeat words or phrases said to them in an attempt to process the information or seek comfort. Let me give you an example of this. Um, one student that I'm familiar with um, took her paper to the professor after class or, or, you know, in Zoom world, you could just meet after class. And she said, you know, professor, I have an A, a 97 on my paper, but you put an 85 in Canvas. Could you fix that, please? And the professor said, oh, I'm so sorry. Yes, I will fix that. I will make that change. And so the student went away and the student said, she's going to change your grade. She's going to change your grade. She's going to change your grade. Well, then what happened is the professor then said, oh, my goodness, she's threatening me, Pam. She's threatening me. I said, no, she's not threatening you. She's not telling you to change the grade. She's reassuring herself that you are going to change that grade and she said oh my gosh thank you so much for telling me that so just realize that happens um, next please Chris 
Um, have unusual reactions to the way things smell, taste, look, feel, or sound. We'll talk about that a little bit more in depth in a few slides. Um, or they may seem uninterested, rude, distracted, or disobedient. Um, most of these guys and ladies are just direct and blunt. That's just how they speak. That's how they think. And they really kind of appreciate if you are clear and um, pretty direct with them. So just realize um, they don't really mean to come across as rude. Last point there, Chris, you may never notice that someone has autism or any of these characteristics unless they become stressed. And then those characteristics might come out and they may seem, wow, really amplified. So just from the eye contact down, you might notice that, that those characteristics are amplified if they become stressed. Okay. Well, it's, it's other things is interesting, especially when it's uh, looking at having the routine piece is that some of these factors is also part of uh, best practices for when it comes to trauma informed teaching as well. Um, dealing with dealing with students who've experienced trauma in their life and how to help students recover from that trauma as well. So it's interesting to see some of that crossover here um, in 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 this area as well. Cool. Okay, next slide. Chris, I appreciate you um, adding commentary to this, <laughs> really do. Okay, so social, um, if you go to the first one, um, the personal space um, is, is um, for some of these folks, um, so click personal space for some of these folks. What I notice is that um, COVID has been good for them. They, the six feet, you know, distance, many times they kind of are in your face. Um, they might have anxiety working in groups. And that's mostly because of um, negotiating. They, many of them lack negotiating skills. And I'll give you a good example here in a minute. But because of the lack of, of negotiating, they have anxiety, they wonder what your perception is of them, and communication is difficult. So you can understand that that is um, very difficult for these folks. So get, let me give you an example. My son learns to negotiate in college, but he also drives. So he is driving, he stopped at a four-way stop, he makes a left turn, um, the next person, it's their turn to go, they bump him in the back rear of his vehicle. Well, 911 is called and um, the person who bumped my son bullied the police officer into giving my son a ticket as well as himself. Well, then, you know, he didn't have the negotiating skills to say, hey, it was my turn. I turned left. You hit me in the back. This is this is all taken care of. Um, so just realize that that doesn't always transfer to um, the different things that they're doing. Okay, so next would be, next point, Chris, appropriate eye contact. That's difficult for many. Um, to interpret nonverbal cues, the next point, um, is difficult for many. Um, so reading the eyes, reading the body language, that is difficult. So um, if you click again, Chris, we'll see an image of a young lady, a beautiful young lady, and you just see from her eyes up. Now that's what my son used to see. That's what he would look for when he was looking to see what you expected from him. So we had to teach him to look at the whole face, the whole body. And so just realize if um, sometimes when folks are stressed, they go back to, they revert back to things that they knew that they were comfortable with. So next image, Chris, when we see this, um, we see this beautiful little girl who's smiling and playing peekaboo. Um, and, and so that was the next click. Um, so that we just have to, you know, realize these are some, some struggles that some of these folks um, deal with. Um, so then one more click, unwritten rules of the classroom to try to adjust my computer so that I can see everything that you all are seeing and also read my points here. Um, so classroom rules, um, 
at the beginning of the semester. Make sure that you um, read those to all your folks when you're going through your syllabus. And this is a good opportunity. So you, for your first gens, your students with diverse backgrounds, your ASD folks, go through them, it's okay. Um, it, it's a great opportunity to, ex to explain all of these things that um, about the unwritten rules of the classroom, taking turns and appropriate length of conversation and, and all of that. And let me also say, this is a great time to um, talk about folks that have documented disabilities and to make sure that you get your paperwork in place and that, um, that that it's, it's um, known for me so that I can figure out what accommodations that I need to um, make for you, but also invite your students to contact you if they don't know what you mean by um, accommodations and disability services, because some folks have never heard that and they don't know what it means and it probably doesn't pertain to them. But you could just invite them for a private conversation. Hey, call me at office hours and we'll, we'll talk about that. Okay. So next slide, please. Let's look at communication. So with communication, the first point, um, difficulty processing verbal communication. Um, they may repeat what is said or be slow answering. So we've talked about this a little bit, but I just want you to know that you might wanna wait 45 seconds or 30 seconds after you ask a question to let students think about what you said process it and then think about what they're gonna say. Okay, next point, please. Um, difficulty staying on topic of little interest or overdoing it on a topic of extreme interest. I mean, I think that <laughs> doesn't need explaining. Um, taking turns is difficult, we've said that. Idioms, jokes, and sarcasm are often difficult to understand. Um, and just say what you mean. So if you've got like, um, say an acronyms for things like um, disability services DS, don't say go to DS or call DS, they call disability services. You know, how's your total college experience? Don't say TCE, you know, so just say what you mean. All right, um, so the next one, point five, so let's see if this will work, if Chris can play this for us. So point five, unusual tone or rhythm of voice with little expressive language. Do you see a little microphone or a little, video a little voice that you can click there chris or no uh, let me try one more click and see if it pops up no i do not see that yeah okay well i had a recording that my son uh, made for you all so that you could hear his um tone but that's no no problem we we will go on and then if we have time at the end i'd be happy to play it for you but it was just a quick um clip and it was um he, he was just talking to you with his, un, his, his tone is unusual and, and he doesn't use a lot of expressive language. Okay, so um, then last point there, express a reaction that's not expected. Um, I have seen folks um, act hysterical, like they may laugh when someone gets hurt, but they don't mean to be disrespectful, it's just a reaction. So just realize that. And I would say that's probably the same case with those with traumatic brain injuries um, as well. Um, Chris, are we ready to move on or do we have a question? We, ha we have a question. Uh, right. What will you say, uh, well, I'm sorry. Um, what will you say to best language for asking uh, questions in the classroom? Uh, who can do this uh, or calling on an individual to give uh, a trial or just asking in general. So uh, I think the question is, is about um, how to ask questions. What is the best way to ask questions? Uh, or if you're having, if you are. Um, right, just or, or like, like call, or calling on individuals. If you're, if you're having an individual who is, who is either, either being stressed. I don't know if you're, if you're observing stress from it or, or um, if you're noticing that they're being stressed from it or is it appropriate to call uh, on individuals or what would be your suggestion as uh, if that's your normal practice? I, I, guess, I guess my question would be to the, the questions without asking for too many more uh, information is this, do you think it's more trial and error or do you think it's more general? Uh, how, or what do you think when it comes to calling on individual students to answer questions? I think it's okay to call on individual students. <laughs> yeah. I do, and if you see their stress, well, kind of help them out, you know? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's, I, I think it's okay to, and especially, you know, if when you get to know your students, you kind of know what they like a little bit, and, and we'll talk about that here in a minute. Maybe you can get them to, um, at the beginning of the semester, kind of have an icebreaker where you send out that type of thing to them. Um, what, what do you like? And then you would know maybe um, if that individual seemed to have, you know, an expertise in something, then mm -hmm that would make them feel good if you're asking them questions. So yeah, I, I think at any time it's okay to call on folks. You and, and it's it's fine. Yeah. And I think also going going back to your initial statement about Spock talking about your unwritten rules in your class, I think another best practice would be to go over discuss you know giving the ground rules for those discussions, saying like I'll call on you, we'll give you 30 seconds or X amount of time mm -hmm. to consider your response and then go ahead and have have you give a response. I think that that might be it would probably be fall in line with some of your uh, best practices when it came to going over those unwritten rules uh, as far as as preparing students to know what to what to what to understand when it comes to that interaction that level of interaction okay, okay let's move to the next slide so um a lot of this motor you won't see but i you know i, I think it's important to kind of cover it so i'll hit it quick so the first ones um walking or running you might notice an odd gait um some students spin their arms um some you might notice when they're sitting in your Zoom, which you would notice, is you might notice a rocking. You might notice that they're jumping up. They have trouble seated. You might see an odd facial expression. Um, so next one would be lack of balance. Um, that's point two. Point three, you might notice poor handwriting or drawing. Um, difficulty with fine motor skills and in small instruments, maybe even a mouse is difficult. Um, I just want to say is I had a student who did not like for me to write on the paper. Um, and so maybe you think, well, I don't write on their paper, but heck, if you are using, um, if you're using speed grader and you're annotating, guess what? You're writing on their paper <laughs> and some of them might not like that. So um, it's okay for you to record your comments back to them. I mean, so just kind of, you know, figure it out. And it's okay to do things different. You learn when you do things different too. Um, and, and I noticed somebody put this in the chat. So I want to say to you, you could provide alternative assessments and universal design for learning. And if you've not had um, some experience with that, I would encourage you um, to um, learn as much of UDL as you can. Maybe you all have some topics on that, but you might uh, like, instead of have a written test, allow students to record a video or provide an option for an oral exam or a sketch. And, and I'm not suggesting that it's not extra work for universal design for learning, because it is. Um, but in the long run, if you're not answering frantic emails to say, I don't know how to do this or phone calls or regrading, I think, you know, or incomplete. I think it may save you time in the long run. And it's a, a pretty fulfilling feeling yourself. Chris, next slide. So let's talk about some sensory um, issues. And I told you we would pop back to this in a minute. Um, so the next slide is sensory. And the first one, light, sound, smells, taste, touch may present difficulty. So first point there is bright colors. Um, at the end of this presentation, I have for you um, a, a little color contrast link that you can use. Um, so next point, Zoom backgrounds. Be very careful about the Zoom backgrounds that you use because they can be very distracting for our folks. Third point, animation. Um, animation Again, it's distracting for folks. And I would even say to you that Prezi is difficult if there's a lot of motion going from slide to slide. It, it, it is difficult for me, I have motion sickness. Um, and then sounds that are too loud. Um, my son is hypersensitive to sound. So if it's very loud, I mean, warn them if you've got something that's gonna come on that's loud. And I know they can control their, um, volume on their computer but if something if you're showing a a, a quick snap um, video of something on zoom and it's coming through and everything's adjusted for your voice and then all of a sudden it's louder just just be aware um so you might decide also that it's not 
mandatory for your students to have their camera on right at the begin of right until like when you're presenting something. So just realize that um, some of your folks might have reasons like for ticks or the rocking or something they may be stressed and they may just need to continue with those behaviors a minute. And so you might decide it's okay for them to turn their um, camera off. All right, do we have any questions or can we move on to learning styles, Chris? Uh, I think uh, some few comments on alternative uh, assessment uh, okay. and, uh, and then agreeing about Prezi as well. <laughs> okay. Okay, so let's move to the next slide then for learning styles. And so um, many of these folks, um, lack organization and planning. And the next point, they may be impulsive and have difficulty self-monitoring themselves. Um, next point, literal thinkers. When my son was little and I'd say I've put my foot in my mouth, he really thought I was going to do that. So just, you know, again, the clear language. Yep. Um, so don't use implied language, use clear language if you can. Um, no real sense of time is the next point. Um, the next point, the need for, to understand the relevance of a topic. I think that's many of us need to understand why it's rele relevant. They may appear easily bored, but don't think they're not listening because that is very important. Um, and then finally, the last task, multitasking is almost impossible because they have, some of them, not all of them, the processing and you've got, and you're thinking about all the processing and you've got all these different things. So just realize that that is, is difficult. Okay, so if we can move to the next slide. So some suggestions that I would have here for you. Um, on the next slide is the first point would be office hours check in. So if you would have, and this is the um, slide third. Yeah. Oh, did I? We're on uh, coping right now. It looks like you don't have suggestions after uh, learning styles. Uh, nope, I did not. Okay, then I'll just read them to you. Sure. Um, so I'll just read these. Um, so, so coping that you might have office hours check ins. You may embed a tutor to act as a moderator in your Zoom if you guys have tutors on campus um, or in your virtual world. Um, you might connect with your tutoring to um, make sure they can connect with your um, person, your ASD people that need help. You may have a kind soul that would be a mentor in your class. Um, again, contact your disability services. They're very good at um, helping these folks um, with and, and you with strategies. Um, another point, we talked about a daily schedule. Um, what are you gonna talk about today? Um, next, you might have slot notes where you type out things and they fill in the blanks that you could provide ahead of time in your LMS for class. Um, I have, Chris will have a slide for this that um, will accompany um, your slide deck um, of notes. When, when all this is finished, please. And then there's PowerPoint slides ahead of class, um, maybe video recordings. Um, you might record your Zoom and post that with it being transcribed. Hands-on demonstrations. Um, remember the more ways that you can sensory touch um, your content, the more you're gonna remember it, students will. You may have review sheets. Um, a schedule of events leading to the test where you use to do and you if you're using canvas and you can put that in a calendar type um, format, you might provide examples of assignments that are excellent and I think that's important for all your folks, they they see what you expect an excellent assignment and and your rubrics. And then if you have students um, that have to repeat assignment back to you, that may be helpful to some of your folks to be able to just have one of them to kind of confirm what the assignment is. Okay, let's move to coping, Chris. Sure. Okay, so with coping, you might notice that um, a stressful situation um, kind of creates odd behavior. Um, some causes for stress may be um, a change in a routine, um, a testing that they don't feel really good about the test, um, an unexpected event, maybe their Zoom locks up. Um, you might 
we talked about notice, rocking, pacing, hand flapping, be talking to themselves. Um, you may even notice um, some aggressive behavior and that might just be their way of not knowing how to communicate their needs to you. But let me say to you that it is um, important to let the student know if, if the behavior is inappropriate and um, to just let them know, so, hey, you know, I noticed that you displayed this behavior and that's not college behavior. It would be better if you could do this. Um, so just make sure that you, um, you know, are able to point out behavior that's not acceptable. And Chris, I, I kind of went through all of those, I, I, that whole slide on coping. Oh, okay, yeah. don't worry. Mm -hmm. so, so sorry, sorry about no, that's that. That's fine, that's fine. <laughs> okay, so we're at us at the after the coping slide. Um, yep. Are you? Let me see. So, do, does that say ASD students level of completion? Is yes, that where you are? That's, that's where we're at. Okay, so let's let's look at this because this is the part that really gets me. Um, ASD students level of completion is lower than all other students with disabilities except those with intellectual disabilities. Um, and next point, please. ASD students have lower rates of employment upon degree completion when compared to all other students with disabilities, all others. And the last point, Chris, many of these students who are employed are under employed and that's over 80%. My son is one of them and most of the folks I know who have autism are in this category. So why should we be concerned? Well, I believe your mission is probably sim similar to ours. Um, if, if you are a community college, which says we give all students the opportunity to learn and develop the right skills so that lives and communities are strengthened. Well, these students need to feel valued. And, and we um, have to try to figure out how to help with the employment piece there. Um, so I will tell you in Virginia, um, Virginia Community College System, we had a couple of folks who presented um, an article in Virginia Business um, and they presented help people earn while they learn and they want to bolster college and employer partnerships apprenticeships, work study, even internships, so that folks can, and, and I would argue this, those with diverse backgrounds need this, all of our students need this, so they can take what they learn in the classroom and what they have in the workplace and they can marry those two to try to figure that out. So um, this is something I'm very passionate about that we have got to work on. All right, Chris, can we move to the next slide? I know our time is running um, <laughs> kind of quick, I, I, I see that. Um, so what do you have there? Suggestions, is that where we are? Yeah, we're up to suggestions. And the first okay. one, first point is, is FERPA. Okay, so you, you and I know FERPA says the student has all the rights. So um, we must give we could tell the student, you know, you could give your parent permission to talk to disability service to help you with your schedule or instructors. So just realize that, you, you know, we might could suggest that to our students. Um, next point, um, these students have been taught to advocate for themselves. So you might say, hey, just remember, I don't know that you need your test read aloud if you don't tell me. So you've got to advocate for yourself. Um, also, the next point, we know you love routine, but if I get sick, I'm not going to know that in advance. <laughs> so you're going to have to just kind of work on, you know, realizing that that happens. Um, next, self-management. This would not be such a big deal in a Zoom world, but um, a lot of times um, losing track of time, cleanliness, um, deodorant, um, maybe they don't use or they forget or get in a hurry, um, um, get a cold and just wipe their nose, you know, with their sleeve. Most of the time, students are really good at helping those folks, you know, helping all of our folks, you know, hey, get a tissue, you know, or in, in a nice way. And, and they respond well with that. Um, last point there, tutoring and peer mentoring, huge, very, very um, huge, I think, for these folks to make sure that you connect with at least tutoring, if there is a way to have tutoring, just to kind of reinforce what's being learned. Um, so this last point, 
is just, I am passionate about this last point. Faculty involvement is the single most critical element for academic success for community college students. And this is Mello and Helen, both of these ladies were um, college presidents. They have been leaders um, in, in several positions and they have published books and many articles. So just remember our ASD folks do not have as many relationships as our other folks. So their relationship with you, it's critical. It is critical. So please remember this if you don't get anything else out of the whole conversation. Um, so um, Chris, can we move to the next point? Um, I just want to, um, the next slide, which I just, we have a scenario slide and we'll probably just skip that one if you think okay. we need to, but you let me know what we need to do. We can come back to it if we need to, but I just want to just let you guys know that there are a couple of court cases out there. Um, and I want you to see these ASD behaviors and see if you see some triggers here. Um, I'll prop well, I'll end up telling you what they are because I just kind of want to go through it real quick. But um, the first one, the first one is Robert, who was taken down and pepper sprayed while on campus. And he requested that his chemistry professor allow him to retake a test with the aid of a calculator. All right, he earned a B without the calculator. Now, just to let you know that most of these folks see anything less than a 100 as failure. A lot of them, I'm gonna tell you the ones I had experience with, see anything less than a perfect as failure. Now Same. I would see a B without a calculator as a great grade. And, and the, the fact that the article put in here that he earned a B without a calculator leads me to believe that this student needed a calculator and had an accommodation for one. So maybe he decided not to use it that day. Um, and, and because he went back to the college campus to try to meet with the professor, it was during class, the um, security was called, they removed the student. He went back again after class, ran around in a circle. So there's that stressed pacing behavior. Um, and so then security came again, pepper sprayed him, removed him from campus um, and told him you can't come back ever. So just realize that, um, this is something that happened and maybe he said, I'm not gonna use my calculator today. Then I would say, fine, you need to sign this piece of paper to say, or, or let's go on a breakout room and Zoom. Let me tell him real quick, hey, you know, that's cool. You don't have to use your, um, your, your calculator and that's fine, but you're gonna realize you might not make a 100 and you have to sign this document or whatever to let me know that you agree that you're not gonna use the calculator. Or would it be a big deal to mix up some problems and let him do those problems again to do it? I don't know, but I just want to point that out um, that it's important. And then the last thing that we'll talk about here, cause Chris, I see we've got five minutes is ABC College. Um, this is just real quick in this one. Um, the student was diagnosed with autism and he hugged and kissed the top of a woman's head. He thought he recognized this person, but he didn't. Um, the person was a stranger. Um, the college actually had him removed because it was um, sexual assault. And they said, you know, we have a um, obli obligation to protect to protect all of our students and a disability is not an excuse. And so this would not be a problem in the um, Zoom world, but maybe this person could have had a peer mentor with them if, if um, he was touchy, you know, or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. So Chris, let's skip the next slide, which said, uh, well, so we'll just, that's fine, just pop out of it. Um, we do have um, some links at the end of, the slide deck that would show universal design articles, um, an accessible syllabus, which I encourage you to check that out. It's very cool. Um, a link to a color contrast checker. And then I, I designed a pamphlet for, um, so I guess it's the very end of the slideshow. There is a, a pamphlet that has been designed for um, mostly face-to-face -face folks, but I think you can find some information on this pamphlet um, that you could use it and switch for the virtual world. I appreciate so much you allowing me to come and speak with you all. I hope that um, I was able to um, provide some insight on some information. I, I would happily enjoy um, communicating with you if you have um, some 
questions or if you know there's some clarification that needs to be made. Thank you very much uh, for coming and sharing with everybody. Um, uh, one of the questions, yeah, one of the definitely one of the comments we're seeing is uh, uh, once once that uh, some of our our ASD students understand that that you are open and you are uh, someone that can they can talk openly to, they come to you talk to you about a lot of unrelated items as well. Uh, and you become you become that 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 conduit uh, of, of everything that that the, they want to talk to. And so there's been some discussion in the chat about setting boundaries. And the Absolutely. Importance of setting boundaries. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's that, you know, the part where we were talking about, you know, you have to let them know, hey, this is not college content type thing here, right? This is something that um, this is, you know, personal. <laughs> you might share that with your mom or your dad. <laughs> Well, exactly. And, and uh, we have about two more minutes left. So I don't know if anyone has one last question. I did post the link to the copy of the pamphlet that they can all everyone can have access to. You can download that. We'll also put it in the Discord as well. Uh, I also put links, links to the PDF version of the slides so people can download that uh, as well uh, so they can have access to those. Um, so anyone with one last question? Or do you want to have one last uh, summary summary comment for everybody uh, that are here? <laughs> I think I talked so fast, and I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> and and this is Kay. I'm just jumping in. You did not. Thank you so much for doing this. And I'm not on camera, but I'm going to jump in a, a question. And this is because something we saw discussions. Okay, online discussions when it's required, when, when an instructor says, I want you to read everyone else, po everyone else's post. That's a little overwhelming sometimes, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So you might say, I'll maybe pick a number, you know, like five or 10 or, or something, because that is difficult, you know, um, overwhelming for, for many folks. Um, especially community college folks, maybe who, who are working, have family and, you know, and then to read thousands of posts that you, you might pick a number there, 10 or something. Okay. Th thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. I appreciate it, Chris. Thank you no, for thank inviting you. me and um, thank you all for your kind comments. Oh, and the only thing I saw was someone mentioned that uh, if you just double check the permissions on the PDF slides to allow folks to download, it uh, looks like they're running into a little bit of a challenge there. Yeah, uh, okay. I'll check it. I'll, I'm slides. sure that's my Google. I'll, I'll fix yeah. that for you. Yeah, no, no worries. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Day. Yep. Bye, all. Bye.